voice of a chauffeur talking with me. bread message. How many remember the first few parts of the whole wheat unleavened bread? No one? Amen. That, that's a life changer. You can't forget that, right? Amen. And uh, one of the objections, and even, even a couple of people in this congregation had mentioned the same objections, uh, and the objections went something like this. If Yeshua is one million percent Yahweh, then how come throughout scripture he is referred to as the son of man or the Ben Adam uh, or the Bar Enosh the Aramaic for Ben Adam is Bar Enosh uh, and so it's either Bar Enosh where we get the Aramaic word Bar Bar Mitzvah uh, or Ben Adam so if Yeshua is one million percent Yahweh and he came in his own flesh, his own blood, and his own spirit, and the question was posed to me in the congregation and also on the internet, how then, uh, and why then is he called the son of man? That's a pretty good question. But in answering that question, we can come to an entire new teaching, which is what we're going to do, which is what Yahweh has, has given me. So what I like so much about these objections is that every time I get an objection, it gives me another opportunity to, to expound on this truth that Yahweh has shown me. Amen? Amen. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. So the question goes, how can Yeshua be fully Yahweh with his own flesh, not man's flesh, and not a human being, although he was cloaked in humanity, he wore humanity, but he wasn't a human being. We learned that through whole wheat unleavened bread. But how can he be not be a human being, the question goes, especially if throughout scripture, in general, Yeshua is spoken of specifically as the what? As the son of man, as the Ben Adam, or as the Bar Enosh. Have you wondered about that? Let's be honest. Yes. Since we've done the whole wheat unleavened bread teaching, maybe that's come across your mind. Maybe that's something you wondered about, right? Yes. Britt, you look like you've done a lot of wondering. All right? How can... Yeshua not be a human being. Now, now again, I encourage you, I don't have the time today. There are five parts on the internet. And when, when Chris gets with the program, which he's been with the program, he'll add this teaching, which is addendum four, and we have the entire series on the internet. Yeah. Okay? I can't tackle everything here in person, but if there are any questions, if you tell your children to leave the room, tell your wife you're busy studying, and get into the word of Yahweh on the internet, you will get all your questions answered. There are about 40 pages on this topic. Four, zero. Amen. The reason you have a question is you have not, perhaps, gone on the internet and spent time looking up and researching these things. Okay, so they're, they're all here in four different parts. But specifically, I want to address this issue of Son of Man, Ben Adam, or Bar Enosh. So, we see Yeshua called the Son of Man, that must mean that Yeshua had human flesh, or that Yeshua was part human. Part Yahweh, part human, right? Wrong. One million percent wrong. The term Ben Adam can refer to humanity in general when it is used in a context such as Tehillim 145 verse 3, where in Tehillim 145 verse 3, it speaks about a specific man. So when, when the term Ben Adam, Bar Enosh, speaks about one man in particular, it could refer to humanity or to a specific man. Such is also in the case in Yechezkel, chapter 2, verse 1. We read in Yechezkel, chapter 2, verse 1, Yahweh says to Yechezkel, Ezekiel, he says, Son of man, 
speak to the house of Israel. So in that case, son of man, Ben Adam, Bar Enosh, is speaking about one particular individual. Other times, like in Tehillim 145, verse 3, it speaks of humanity or of the human race in totality. Amen. But here is the shock of shocks. Like Yeshua is the king of kings. This is the shock of shocks. That the term that you and I have been taught proves he was partially human, exactly the opposite. That's the term proof that he had, he was not a human being, but he came, the word was made flesh, and he came in the likeness of sinful flesh. He was a sacrifice prepared by Yahweh before the foundation of the world. When the Kohanim in the Tanakh laid hands on the bulls, goats, and animal sacrifices, well, I guess those animals became human beings, right? When Yahweh transferred the sins of Israel onto the bulls, goats, and turtle doves, and all the other animals, using the argument that many people use, by transferring the sins to the animals, the animals became human beings, right? Obviously not. There's animal flesh, there's human flesh. Yeshua did not have human flesh because he couldn't have been the savior. Mm -hmm. Because if, if in order to carry our sins in his body on the tree, if he had to become a human being with a dust nature made from Mary or, or Joseph or a combination or a permutation thereof, then that means he had a dust nature and his bread was not the heavenly bread from above. And we learned many weeks ago, Yahweh used neither the egg or the sperm of a human being. So, the very term, Bar Enosh, or Ben Adam, is when properly understood, turn your neighbor and say, understood properly. Let's try that side of the room. Properly understood? Oh man, you guys are bummed out today, I don't know. Understood properly, just the opposite is true. The term, Ben Adam, Bar Enosh, is only as it refers to Yeshua. Not, if it refers to Ezekiel, it refers to his humanity. If it refers to the nation of Israel, it refers to their humanity. But as it refers to Yeshua in the Brit Chadasha, it only, in terms of his messianic calling, his messianic identity, his messianic uh, mission, only. Turn your neighbor and say only. Only refers to his being one million percent Yahweh and not having a human dust nature flesh. Go with me to Dan Daniel, the book of Daniel, chapter 7 and verse 13. Daniel, chapter 7, and verse number 13. Don't you like the way the Ruach HaKodesh calls people out? See? She didn't mention any names. I didn't mention any names, but <laughs> the Ruach sure calls people out. Amen? Amen. Daniel 7.13. And I, I saw in the night vision, and see one like Bar Enosh, the Aramaic. That book of, part of the book of Daniel was written in Aramaic. Came with the clouds of the Shemaim, and came to the ancient of day, and, he, and they brought him, meaning Barinosh, or the son of man, they brought Barinosh to the father, the ancient of days, and they brought Yeshua before the father. Amen. Verse 14. Now this is what Daniel sees. This is exactly what Daniel sees. And it was given to the son of man, Barinosh, or Ben-Adam. There was given to him dominion and tiferet and amalchut, that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve the Son of Man. All peoples, languages, and nations should serve the Son of Man. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. His dominion.